Yo, 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 what's going on, world? This is your boy Najee from Cigar Talk. And today I got a very special guest, man. Seated to my left. Hey, every boxer fan knows who this is, man. I'm at Casa de Benavides. I got the Mexican monster himself. What's good, brother? What's up, man? How you living, man? Doing good, man. I'm feeling good. I just want to tell you guys, thank you guys for, uh, for making me a part of this and coming through and getting this, uh, getting me on the podcast. Nah, for sure, man. Thank you. I appreciate your yeah. time. Uh, we out here in Miami, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I know usually you were, you've been in Seattle. You've been in Seattle for a minute, kind of training yeah. and stuff. Uh, the switch up, how, how's the switch up been just in terms of your training and how you maneuver now? Everything has been amazing, bro. I mean, I love Seattle. I've been there for five years, for the past five years. But I mean, honestly, um, I like to move around a lot. I'm from yeah. Phoenix originally. Uh, I lived there and I moved out when I was 14. Then I went to Cali. Then I went to Vegas. Then I went to Oregon. Then Seattle. And now I'm here in Miami. So I just... I feel like for me, I just is this is something I always wanted to do. I wanted to, you know, live in a lot of states, yeah. and um, I'm just happy with everybody here. Everybody's been really nice, and I'm just looking forward to uh, having a great training camp here. Nah, for sure. I mean, so they saying you up on the 15th on the Javante Davis card? Is that confirmed? Is yeah. that that's locked oh, yeah. in? Yeah, that's 100 percent confirmed. You okay. know, we're really excited to uh, announce that uh, it's going to be me and Javante Davis on the same card. It's big. It's going to be a it's going to be a massive card, bro. So we're excited. Do you know where it's gonna be? I've been hearing rumors like maybe Houston, maybe Chicago. Nobody. So I don't, I don't know exactly where it's at. Uh, yeah. But the 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 exact date is June fifteenth. But for the for the venue, I don't know. I don't yeah. know right now. All right. So I mean, you're going up to seventy five for yeah. this fight. I can't pronounce the dude's name like Gravishik. Gr- 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 yeah, Bosnik. Bo- yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's it hard sounds to get his different name. <laughs> than what it looks like. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to get his name. But so, yeah. how do you feel like going to seventy five? Does it feel differently? For you, in terms of just like you know how you weighing in, how you carrying power, like what's seventy five look like to you? Yeah, I definitely feel like I'm gonna feel stronger at one seventy five. Uh, I've been at one sixty eight for my whole career, ten yeah. years, and uh, you know I think as as you get older, your body grows, you grow more muscle, and I feel like I just been I've been wanting to get to one seventy five for a long time, but because you know I have a big fight, I'm potentially at the at the stage of fighting for all the titles at one sixty eight. Yeah, I was making that extra uh, going the extra mile to stay at the weight class, but opportunity presented itself at 175 and you know I think this is a perfect time to make this fight happen not for sure I mean I definitely want to see what you look like at 75 obviously we got to get into the shits man because it's been everywhere yeah uh Canelo Alvarez dog you know they say face of boxing like you and him that's the biggest fight in boxing yeah yeah. it's the biggest fight in boxing he had recently he came out and said I need 200 million to get in that ring when you saw that what was your what was your thoughts so it was just funny to me but honestly it's, it's not it didn't surprise me I think it's just funny the way, you know, I kind of, he said that he needed 200 million. So I just said what everybody was thinking. Hopefully he could buy himself a pair of balls after he makes that money. <laughs> ah, yeah. But it's just, you know what I mean? It's, that's, I don't think, you know, that's a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we could get it done. Hopefully, you know, I still have faith that this fight will be made because it is the biggest fight in boxing today. Yeah. So I just got to, go, you know, just stay focused, stay hungry, you know, keep working hard and maybe it'll happen in the future. I right, so do you feel like because a lot of boxing fans now after he said the two hundred million he caught a lot of a lot of flack for that. Do you feel like he he scared or ducking or whatever like how boxing fans say? Do you think that? I mean, I definitely do think. I mean, he's taking off challenges. You know, he fought Golovkin three times. He's fought everybody. You know, if yeah. I talk so much shit, come shut me up. Mm. He's getting a good paycheck for it. Go yeah. fucking shut me up. Yeah. But you know, for the simple fact that he's asking for 150, 200 million, like come on, bro, like that's. And he con- he continues to say I'm not worth anything. It's funny that you're gonna ask two hundred million dollars for a fighter who's not worth anything. Mm. You know what I mean? So take me out of the equation. There's not him asking for that amount is not realistic right. in any way. So I mean, it just I really do think he's scared of me. But like I said, um, I know that there's no man that could face me that could beat me mm. in this world, yeah. and I, I'm hundred percent confident in that. So. If it's not him, whoever, I don't care. I'm gonna be beating everybody, and I'm, you know, this is what a, this is something I wanted my whole life. Yeah. I've really, i really worked to be the greatest that I could possibly be, and I'm, I feel like I'm on the on the steps of making that happen. That's what's up. Have you been around him to like, you know, size him up, feel the energy? Like, nah. have you ever been near him in that, like, in a space where y'all can, like, you know? I've never seen him in person. Okay. But he's small. He's, yeah. I think he's as tall as my dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he's small, but I mean, uh. That doesn't take away anything, you know. At, at the end of the day, I respect boxing. He's a great fighter. Yeah. But I just want to give the fans this this fight because I feel like if we look back, if this fight never happens, and in ten years we look back, there's gonna be a fucking great table we left, a uh, great fight we left on the table. That's a fact. All right, so hold up, but let me break it down for me because obviously you've had to think about this fight in your head and play it out like how it goes. 
you know, Canelo, he's, you know, I would say kind of slow on his feet, a lot of power, good counter puncher who like to fight inside. So, like, when you when you breaking it down, like, how do you see yourself able to beat him? I definitely see myself stopping him because the type of fighter I've been, I've been, I've worked with the top fighters since I was 15 years old. I only have 10 amateur fights. Mm. I didn't have any amateur experience. My experience, I got it from sparring with champions. I started sparring Golovkin when I was 15 years old. Kelly man. Pavlik, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., a whole bunch of fighters, man. I'm a really seasoned veteran. And right. then when I get in there, I'm the type of fighter, a fighter that I like to fire. Yeah. I like feeling the heat because that's when the best comes out of me. You yeah. know what I mean? And that, that's just what type of person I am. That's what type of fighter I am. And I just want to give the opportunity. Uh, I, I want the opportunity to show the world who I am. Yeah. All right. The other thing he said was, uh, he said that all he brings to the table is a 25-pound weight advantage or whatever. Um, were you hearing that? Just like, because, you know, people, I've heard people say sometimes, like, oh, they said they feel like you was a weight bully or whatever the case is. Were you thinking about that? Just like the weight part of it. What did you think when he said that? I, I just felt like he was scared. I don't even come in at 25 pounds. I come in 17, but that, you know, yeah. that's the standard. Yeah. But what does it matter, bro? It's always, it's that I'm undisciplined, that I come in 25 pounds. Like, he always has a fucking, like, an excuse. Yeah. It's always something, bro. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, he knows that I'm the biggest threat. He knows I'm the best yeah. out there. Yeah. So he has to, he's trying to downplay me in a way where nobody wants, you know, I don't know, bro. He's just, he's just saying a whole bunch of shit, making himself look stupid. It felt like he was setting up a rehydration clause to yeah. me. That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, all right, if I say this, then when I do the rehydration yeah. clause, whatever, is that something that you would entertain if they came back to you? Like, look, we want the fight later this year, but, you know, you got a rehydration clause. I have no problem with that, but fuck that. He's getting if he if that happens, he's getting two hundred million, and he got to fill the twenty five extra pounds. They say, and I'm, mm, I went in. Yeah, come on, bro. One hundred fifty, <laughs> two hundred million. You're still gonna put a, a rehydration clause? Like yeah. that's crazy. I mean, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. At the end of the day, I'm comfortable with with whatever. Yeah. I don't really even come in that heavy. But if they have to be a rehydration clause, I'm, I'm down for you whatever. Do. I mean, I feel like, you know, when you're talking them type of figures, 200 million, that's like the only guys I feel like spending that type of money is the Saudis. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The Saudis is out there doing that. Is that something that, you know, just what they're doing in boxing, is that interesting to you? Is that something like, you know, I would go mess with them if, if the bag was right? No, yeah, definitely. Um, so to be honest with you, I personally, I can't do that because uh, the way my contract is set up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't mess with them people um, because, you know, obviously my co I can only work with my own promoter, but yeah. they said if, it, if you know, they're willing to make that fight happen, obviously it's like an enormous together, amount yeah. of money that yeah. they would, they could, it could happen. So I definitely do respect the, the, everybody, the whole movement they got going on, on over there, the Saudis, you know, yeah. they've been putting some great fights on. Not even, not only just great fights, they've been putting great events on. Yeah. I seen that fight when he fought with, uh, with Ngandu when he fought Tyson Fury and it mm. was just like a, futuristic fight slash yeah. concert. It was just like a, a whole epic, event. Yeah. epic concert, bro. And yeah. it was just, you know, I would definitely love to be a part of that one day. And, you know, it, it looks like it might happen. So I'm very yeah. excited. Tell me about Al, man, because I heard, you know, I heard you say in an interview one time, they was like, yo, well, if Canelo signed to Eddie, would you go to Eddie? And you was like, nah, like Al's treated me good. Yeah, my whole yo. career is no reason. Um, tell me about Al, just because I, I think boxer fans now, they be wanting to know about the business and things yeah. like that. Like when you first met Al to like, you know, do business with him. What was your thoughts and like, what did he tell you? Yeah, so I, I was, I've, to be honest with you, I've only seen him in person one time. I've talked to him a lot of times. You know, yeah. we've gotten really close because I've become a pay-per-view fighter and the, the fighters that have become the pay-per-view fighters, they have a close relationship with Alan. You know, I've been doing my job. I've been putting up numbers and I've been giving great results. Yeah. So he's been, he's always treating me really well. You know, he's taking care of me financially. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll always be grateful for that man because, you know, he took me, he gave me a life that I didn't even think was possible when I was younger, mm. you know what I mean? And, and it wasn't for free or nothing. I worked hard. I told him, I gave him my word. I was going to work as hard as I can, and I was going to be the best in the world. So he's seen that, and, you know, he supported me 100%. So I'm, I'm a very loyal person at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think about Amazon Prime? Like, that's a whole new network, a whole new thing. Is that exciting to that, you? It's, like, it's huge because we're, we get to reach a lot more, a, a way bigger audience. Yeah. And you know, I feel like the other good thing that's coming that came out of this that really nobody's talking about is that the security system for the pay-per-views. Mm. I think you know Amazon. I don't think they want to miss out on that money either. Right. So I think it's going to be harder to you know so stream. You stream it yeah. And, so yeah. I think that's a big point too. So that that obviously helps all the fighters that get pay-per-view points. So um, I'm just very excited, bro. There's been a lot of big things happening. Um, even just from me being a part of 
PBC and Amazon Prime. I'm yeah. just very happy to in 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 the the point of my life where I'm at. Not for sure. I mean, listen, you in a, a great position, right? Like you you beat this dude at 75. You're in line for the winner of Bivol and Better yeah. Beef. Um, how you see that fight going? Because that's one of them fights too. That's like that's a big one. That's one of them ones. How did how do you see that fight? So that's a that's a big fight, bro. I, know. I don't know. Who's I, don't, win. I don't know who's gonna win either. I don't know who's gonna win either because uh, uh, Berta Beef is a dog, but Bivol is a dog too. Yeah. So at the end of the day, bro, this is how boxing should be. You know, the best fight the best. I don't know who's gonna win. You know, I'm sure they're we're both working extremely hard. So yeah. we're gonna see a classic light heavyweight fight. And that all that also gives me more motivation because I'm next in line to get and fight for that too. So this is the like what I said when it, when I told myself I was gonna make my dreams come true when I was little. This is the moment I wanted to be on. You know, yeah. they don't. These are not easy moments in life. They're scary, bro. Trust mm. me, they're scary as hell. But I don't feel like that should discourage you from actually going out to get it because once you go out there and do the job right, the reward is so much greater on the other side. When you say scary, do you mean like? You know, just the magnitude of it. Like when you going in the ring, do you have like? Are you scared? Like I feel, when you no, going no. In the I ring? feel like no. Nah, it's not that. I feel like when people say like, "Are you scared? Are you nervous?" It's not that you're scared. You have John Jones said it best. He said, "There's some type of nervous energy about you," mm. because everybody like say if you're an artist or actor, you're doing a big show. Yeah. You you will have to be a liar to say that you don't get the butterflies. Yeah, you know what I mean? There's something sure. about it. Yeah. But, you know, if you're 100% confident in your skills and what you do, then you use that nervous energy and you apply it to the fight. Right. And um, like I said, I, if you don't think you could beat the best in the world, then you shouldn't even be saying shit. Yeah. And I'm right here. I'm saying all this stuff because I, I, I told you I, could, I feel like I could beat any man in the boxing ring on this, on, this, on, this, on this earth. So it's just for me training hard, staying dedicated, and then, um, like I said, just making my dreams come true. Nah, that's what's up. Who do you think poses the harder fight for you between Bivol and Baturbiev? Who who presents the the more difficult fight? To be honest with you, bro, I have just by speaking on on um, percentage and stuff like power percentage. I think probably Baturbiev. Yeah. Because he's fourteen and zero, fourteen knockouts, or 14, fifteen and zero, fifteen, 15 knockouts. knockouts. Yeah. But the thing I see about him is a little bit different. That might be an, it. Might be an easier way to beat him is that he's really flat-footed, but he has a lot of power. Yeah. The thing about Bivol, he's more of a complete fighter. Right. He can hit you from here. He can move here. You know, you can't hit him. He's moving. You know, yeah. using the whole ring. So, those two fights, you just gotta be extremely ready for. Right. I mean, they're both poser poser challenges, and they're gonna be extremely hard. But I feel like we could beat either of them. You sparred Bivol before. I sparred Bivol, yeah. Multiple I, times. I sparred him multiple times. Come on, man, give me something. How was that like? All right, when you sparred Bivol and you left the ring, were you like, man, I could beat this dude? No, I definitely like? know I could beat him. You know, I don't, I don't want to talk about that sparring session because Bivol has been a great guy to me. Yeah. Uh, but we had just, I just, I'm letting you know I can knock him out. Oh, you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, like I, I can knock him out. It's not gonna be yeah. easy, but I know I can. Are knock you him saying out. it off the sparring, or are you saying that just like no, off from the sparring? Him? Off the sparring, yeah, what happened in the sparrings? You know what I mean? I could definitely knock him out. It won't be easy because he's a he's a great fighter, but yeah. that's also gonna be another legendary fight when it gets happen when it gets made happen. How important is being like a two division champ to you? Like is that something that matters or what? Yeah, it, it's um it 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 matters to me a lot. Those are just like my out accolades and you know, for me by the time I'm done, I've told myself I wanna be a, a 17 time world champion you know i got mm. three of them right now i'm fighting for another belt yeah uh, so that that's that's what i want to end up at you know so it's now in the beginning before i won the belt i didn't really think it was possible right you know but i just said fuck it i'm gonna work extremely hard and whatever happens happens you know if, if i don't succeed then fuck mm. it but all i know is that i put my 100 percent into it yeah i did that i became world champion three times so now i'm really confident right. that i could win right. another you know 15 more yeah you know what i mean so it's just it's just, um, it's not only about me, either. it's about other people in life that once you get a goal that you think you can't achieve, raise the bar even higher. Mm. How, well, how high you think you could go, right? Because we talking 75, then there's cruiser and heavy. Like, how high can you, do you feel like, all right, I could, I could actually do that? So, right now, I've only won the WBC in the super middleweight. There's four other belts. Yeah. So, with these, I'm going to get another, I'll have four by the time I, I fight at 175. There's four more belts that Canelo has, so that'd be eight. Yeah. And then we could go up to uh, light heavyweight. There's other belts we could unify there, and then maybe cruiserweight. I don't know about heavyweight. Yeah, that's heavy, what I was heavy, gonna say. Heavy. Heavyweight's kind of big, that's but different. 
Cruiserweight, I, I think we could do that. Mm. Yeah, so we three divisions. Uh, that, that would, uh, that's the plan, you know, being champion in all three divisions. Yeah, okay. Um, another fight I wanted to talk about, I know I hear some fans clamoring for it sometimes, uh, David Morel. That's another great fight. Yeah. So my problem with the fight not happening now, so David Morel is in the same seat I'm in. We're both trying to see when we're going to get our world title shot. Yeah. Because he's the interim title of the WBA. I'm the interim title of the WBC. WBC. Mm -hmm. That fight, for, we, for us to make happen, that should be a world title fight. Mm. So it's sense. like a, this, like it's kind of disrespectful. Like this guy's not even fighting anybody ranked in the fucking 168, and where we have the the interim titles. You know, what yeah. I mean, we should already been world uh, world champions if they would have the opportunity. Yeah. So this fight is much bigger world titles. So hopefully after this fight, they could either the WBC and the WBA strip Canelo. Yeah. And then we both make the fight a unified world title fight. Is that something? Because you know that that's one thing I see him on online. Like every time he's doing interviews, he mentions you. He says you duck in and you that's, know that's good, do bro. His whole that, thing. That's good. That's good that he could keep saying that. I mean, at the end of the day, we need opponents. Yeah, we definitely need opponents that, that make big fights, and yeah. that'll be a big pay per view fight. I agree. Yeah, was it? But I feel like there was a time where uh, I feel like I saw Samson say like this was gonna happen next or something, yeah, and then it I, just kind of what was that? So there was before. We had said, fuck it, let's make the fight happen. Yeah. And then they didn't want to fight. They didn't want to fight. So as we get the fight with Boo Boo, we said, well, we're going to make the fight happen. They, they thought that they were going to make the fight happen. I already had the fight signed. Oh, with Boo Boo already? Yeah, with Boo Boo. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's a lot of back and forth, but that fight definitely is going to happen because yeah. he's not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. You know, so that could be a big fight potentially in a year. So is that priority to you? Like, you no, want yeah, that? Oh, yeah, definitely, like definitely. I want to go through these three fights first. And then, yeah. obviously, we have to... The sanctioning, the, the sanctioning bodies have to do, do something about that, yeah, bro. Like, right. bro, like, I've been, I've, been, yeah. I've been mandatory to fight for three years. I think David Morrell for two years. So what are we going to do? Are, is there, they going to give the belts up or he's going to fucking fight a, a, or is Canelo going to fight a 54-pounder or some <laughs> yeah. shit like that? You know right. what I mean? So it's just, at the end of the day, we just want what, 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 what we burned. Yeah. You know, we've earned title shots. Nah. Real, real world, world title, title, title shots, not interim titles. Yeah. Nah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, you mentioned the fight with Andre, obviously. Uh, man, you made that look easy, bro. Yeah. I didn't think, I, I ain't gonna lie. I thought, just me analyzing it, I was like, I felt like, I was like, I thought you was gonna win, but I thought you was, I don't wanna say struggle, but I thought it was gonna be competitive. I'm more trouble, yeah. It didn't even look, I, you could tell me if it felt like that, but outside looking in, it didn't look that competitive. So, like, when I tell people, I tell the guys, I tell, I'll, you know, I have a group of guys I work with, uh, boxing and stuff, I tell them, Bro, always the fights are winning the training camps. Mm. You got to fucking put everything into the training camp. You have to make it as long as you possibly can. So make sure you work as much as you have to work. I did 12, 13 weeks. And every day I was working extremely hard. That's why the fight looked so easy. I thought there was going to be a harder fight too. Oh, you did? I thought yeah. it was going to be a way harder fight. Yeah. So by the time when they stopped, I'm like, man, it's bullshit, bro. I'm barely getting Wonder started. Man. I'm barely getting started. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But it was, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The fights are one in the training camps. You work extremely hard. That's what type of performances you're going to get. Do you feel like, like Caleb was a harder matchup for you than I think Andre? so, yeah. He was because also, there was a couple factors in that. The referee was helping him out a lot. Like in what way? What you mean? Caleb hugged me. There was a TikTok that counted how much time oh, he clinched. Clinch. 70, 70 <laughs> times. Damn. Bro, after the third or fourth time, the referee is supposed to tell you, you can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't intentionally. Excessively clinch yeah. yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You can't do that. And um, I feel like if the referee would have told him something before, you know, I would probably would have got him out of there. Yeah. Also, too, the ring was way bigger. Mm. It was a way bigger ring. It yeah. was a 22 by 22. And um, I think Caleb, is, he's, a, he's a more battle-tested He's a better fighter. I think better than Andre. Yeah, I think yeah. so. And he's more bad. I mean, he had just been in the ring with Canelo. Too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So he was ready. He was doing good, too, yeah, until he, he got stopped. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. But it was a great fight, bro. That fight was my first pay-per-view. Yeah. My first uh, taste at the big stage, you know what I mean? So it, it was a dope fight. It was a dope experience. And a shout, a shout out to Caleb Plant, too. You know, he's a... You know, we had a little, yeah. little beef during the fight. I mean, during the training camp and all that stuff. But, you know what I mean? We settled it like men. And, you know, I have nothing but respect for him. For sure. Um, I want to talk about your, you know, your amateur time. Because you, you mentioned that earlier. You said that, you know, you didn't really have much of an amateur career, right? Yeah. Like, it was, you know, you had maybe 10 fights. And then you started just sparring champions. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because the amateur part of your career, that's where you learn and develop and yeah. whatever. So how was that, like, going from, all right, I had these 10 fights and now... 
I'm sparring champions. Like, how much of a learning curve was that for you at that time? So, I mean, it wasn't really much of a learning curve. The thing is, I have been boxing since I was two years old. The only reason I didn't fight is because, you know, I was, I was a fat kid. Yeah. I didn't really yeah. like boxing. My dad made me, he'd always make me train boxing. Yeah. But when it would be time to make weight, I wasn't really emotionally invested like that. Like, mm. I'm going to lose weight. And I was a little kid, too, bro. So, I had been training from two all the way until it really got serious until I was, like, ten. Yeah. Then I just started, my dad, he started me, making me train like a professional. I mean, having me running mountains, um, sparring, training strength and conditioning trainers. And um, my dad was like, okay, you're not going to fight. You're going to spar the best. Mm. So it's like, you know, back then my dad, my dad's such a tough, uh, he's such a tough trainer, bro. And he's like an old school Mexican guy. I remember the first tough sparring I had, I think it was like my second sparring I was getting the shit beat out of me, bro. <laughs> Who was and it? I remember was I was like four or five years. I don't know. Oh, some okay, kid okay. from the gym. Yeah, yeah. And I go to the corner like, and I start crying like I need to get out. Like, yeah. My dad's like, if you don't throw, I'm gonna leave you in there in there for more, more. rounds. So <laughs> yeah. either you defend yourself or I'm gonna leave you in there. I'm like, oh shit. Well, I guess. Right. So that's when my dad taught me to be like really like strong. You know what I mean? Emotionally strong yeah. for myself. And then once I got to like maybe 10 you know this at the time i still wasn't really emotionally invested into like losing weight and stuff yeah but my dad would make me spar like the best in the in the city so that was one thing we did too we'd go we'd go seek out the best sparrings in the city it was it started in arizona then california and then just like that little by little you spar one guy then you beat him up then you go to like the best and the yeah. best and then you get to the champions right and then i was holding my ground with all the champions even at a young age is your brother with y'all at this point yeah so my did? brother he's the one who started everything he's yeah. the one he's the reason why you know uh i i would credit all my success to him because if it wasn't for my brother i wouldn't be who i am yeah he really taught me to be the person i wanted to be and uh, he was always helped me training boxing and stuff and i always looked up to him too because he was the best he was ranked he won every tournament for like 10 years, bro. Yeah. It was like ringside, silver gloves, golden gloves, Coachella, all these, all these, uh, all these tournaments. And that just seeing him just helped me learn a lot. Mm. And they kind of gave me a break too, because my dad, he was more invested in my brother. Yeah. Cause my brother to win everything. So I kind of did my own thing on the side, but I always watched right. and I always learned. And, you know, thank God, you know, that, uh, Watching him made me just motivated to be who I am today. What, what, what point was it that you started to gain the confidence and feel like, damn, like, all right, this boxing thing is something I really want to do. Like, I'm, now I'm invested in this. What, what point was that for you? To be honest with you, it was like when I was 14 years old, I was already, I dropped out of school twice already. And I was just like, man, like, it really hit me. Like, bro, I don't know how to do anything else besides <laughs> boxing. This is it. And I'm 15 years old. And then my dad, I wasn't even doing good in school either. And he was like, oh, yeah. So like, I need to talk to you. It's either hundred, you have to go hundred percent in boxing or hundred percent in school. So I'm either going to take you out of school or I'm going to leave you in school. You're going to stop boxing or you're going to go do school. Right. And I'm like, fuck bro, I don't even like school anyways. I'm like, fuck it, let's <laughs> just do it. Yeah. And I just started from there. My life had been like a training camp, just training super just hard every in. single day. And then yeah. we had the opportunity to go to Big Bear, Sparrow yep. Golovkin, yep. then Kelly Pavlik and you know the list goes on and on and that that's sparring those world champions because when i was i started sparring them young and then when you're kind of giving a champion the work and you're 15 years old they get yeah. kind of mad they try to drop you oh okay. and i wouldn't let that happen so right. that i i kind of I, I learned all my ferociousness in the sparring all right so what was it you got to paint that picture for us because triple g especially at this time that ain't no joke like triple g i got a good story about triple g yeah. when i first sparred him this was before he made his u.s debut i was i literally turned 15 like two weeks before that Damn. and i go in there and we're at in big bear because my brother was in a fight for a world title and um we're in there and then uh, Abel Sanchez, he's like, no, my dad tells him, he's like, do you have any sparring? He's like, yeah, I, I got this guy. Yeah. Like, Who's the guy? Gennady Golovkin. I didn't know who the fuck he it was. Nobody knew anything about him. Right. And I'm like, fuck it, let's go. I'm like, let's spar. And I'm re I remember I'm putting my gloves on, bro, and he's across the ring from over me. I look over at him, bro. He gives me like the coldest scared <laughs> stare ever. I'm like, yeah. oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, fuck it, let's go. I'm like, right. I ain't, I, I, I I'm already all the way in. I can't back out. Mm -hmm. So we're in there. You know, I know I'm, I'm surprising him because I'm, I'm getting him with some good shit. Yeah. There was this moment we both throw a left hook. 
to the body. We catch each other. He hurt me, and but I know I hurt him too. Mm. We both go, mm, and we kind of step back. <laughs> but right. I was, oh, so you did. So that was damn. that was the beginning of sparring. Did that give you confidence at that yeah, point? Like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, definitely. And damn. then he liked he liked the work I gave him too, and he made me my his uh, his um. His like his like main sparring, sparring, sparring partner, partner, his main oh. sparring partner. And yeah. I was giving him some good work, yeah. bro. I was people would the guys that that go spar that that all sit there and watch the sparring. They'd be like, man, it's like we don't understand how you're doing this. Yeah, how you're doing this good with this guy. Like this guy's an animal, and you're 16 years old. So that that helped me after I learned how to you know be successful with Golovkin and have you know actually land good shots on him. Mm -hmm. Everybody else became easy. Was that your hardest sparring? You yeah. Think? Yeah. Even to this day, it's still my hardest sparring. Damn. But the thing about him, bro, I would tell everybody, bro, the the, the nicest guys outside of the ring are the killers. Okay, in boxing. Yeah. That's how Golovkin is. He'd be like a, that in the streets, too. He's a, yeah, 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 yeah. He's a how. super nice guy, yeah. you know, humble. And that's why, like, I, I try to be like him because I respect him a lot. I respect for what he stands. You know, he helped all his people out. And, you know, yeah. I kind of just try to follow that that influence and, you know, that, that uh, uh, role. Uh, you yeah. don't have him be my role model. You know what's crazy? I, like, I see videos of you back then. And you, like you said, you was big, bro. Yeah. But you were fast. Yeah. Like you was like a like yeah. you didn't look as you didn't look that fast as you were. Yeah. Um. What point was it that you realized like with you and your brother? Because your brother was the man, right? It was like you know, Jose is the you know, yeah. and Benavidez, Jose, Jose, Jose. What point did you realize like all right, it's now shifting kind of from Jose being the focal point to you? So, um, my brother, he had always had uh, in, uh, issues with his hands. He had injured his hand and he was out for like a year. And that's really what I had to kind of take the name on my back. You know, because you always hear people talking shit, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, they're the yeah. little dudes in the gym, so yeah. you had to go, you know, show them up, beat somebody up. Right. But just like that, just, you know what I mean? Just, and just wanted to make a name for myself, you know, and uh, that's really what, that's really what really got me to be who I am, you know, just really wanting to show everybody who I am. Because when I step into a room back then, bro, it wasn't David, oh, this fucking, the Mexican monster. Yeah. It was, who the fuck is that little fat kid? <laughs> like, that, no, that's Jose's yeah. brother. Right. Oh, that's Jose's brother, brother. brother. That's a little mm. fucking fat kid over there. And yeah. that, that would piss me off a lot, you mm. know what I mean? And I'd be like, man, I'm gonna show these people. I, I think that's really what made me to be the fighter I am, that anger. Yeah. Just having, imagine you had had been boxing your whole life and you step into a gym and nobody respects you just because I offer you how you look. Right. So then after I would get in the ring with them and I'd give them that work, they wouldn't say shit. Mm. They'd respect there. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's kind of how I did. Did y'all used to fight a lot? You and your brother? Uh, yeah. We sp not, not like, we only got in like three fist fights, but like sparring, yeah. He was beating your ass back yeah, then. Yeah, right? yeah. Back then until I really, <laughs> I still, until I started putting it on him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. Now we have some good sparring sessions, though. I mean, how, how crazy was it for you? Obviously, like, you know, a family member, you know, it was public when he got shot and he went through the whole rehab to get back. Yeah. Um, how crazy was that part just for, like, you know, you and your family at that moment? It was just crazy, bro, because in Arizona, I feel like if, if you have some type of fame in your own city, a lot of the people in your own city that you grew up around, they really don't want to see you win. Mm. You know what I mean? And then it's just, I don't know if you've ever been to Phoenix, bro, but Phoenix, Arizona is crazy, bro. Yeah. It's fucking crazy out there. And, um... You know, things happen, and then you know, my brother ended up getting shot in front of his house. So it was just like, that, then that's what I made the decision. I'm like, I'm not really trying to be out here. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Like, sure. it's, just, yeah. it's yeah. kind of whack that you're doing this for the city, and then, you know, your own people in your own city do this type of shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, bro. It's some, so, um, but like I said, I've always been there for my brother. You know, I've always supported him, whatever he's needed. And yeah. um, I mean, even now, we still, you know, I'm just happy that he was not only able to still walk, but to be able to box yeah. and to, you know, still, For you know, Charlo, you yeah, know man. Yes, yeah. he's still doing his career too. So, I mean, it was just, sometimes the shit happens. You just got to step back and look at the picture and then, you know, just, uh, make the decision on where you want to go. Yeah, for sure. Um, I saw on your, on your Instagram, Jake Paul pulled up to the gym the other yeah, day to yeah. watch you spar. Um, uh, obviously Jake got a, well, first, what did he tell you? Like, what, what was what was y'all saying, you know, just when Jake pulled up? Like, so, I, I've talked to him before. I went to go see him when he fought in Phoenix, when he fought Anderson Silva. Yep. And uh, Jake has always been cool, bro. He's always a cool dude, you know. So, I want to show, uh, I show my support to him because he, sh he shows support to me. And then um, he just showed up to the gym, you know, we chopped it up. And, yeah. Yeah. What you think about him fighting Mike, man? Oof. That's a crazy, <laughs> Jake it's versus a, Mike is crazy. It's going to be a good fight. I feel like. The only thing that worries me is, is Mike Tyson's age. Yeah. But Mike Tyson is always going to be a fighter at heart. You know what I mean? So it's really just how he prepares. 
And um, it's going to be a good fight, bro. Jake Paul, he's not, I think he knows it. I mean, it's Mike Tyson. You got yeah. to get ready. So yeah. we'll see how it turns out. But, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, um, hopefully it's not, you know, nothing too crazy. Right. You know what I mean? Mike on, is 60, bro. That's so the only like, thing that worries me, bro. Yeah. But like I said, if, if Mike goes on there and, you know, gives Jake a good fight, we're not, we're not gonna be surprised. I'm not surprised. You know what I mean? Mike, and he's from Brownsville, yeah, so that's yeah, like, yeah. You know what I'm but you know what I mean. But I mean, I think it's gonna be good, bro. Mike, he's a, he's like I say, he's a world champion. He's a fighter at heart. You know what I mean? So I I think it's gonna be a good fight. Do you like these type of fights, like the influencer or just the I don't know what to call it, influencer, but just you know the fights that's not real boxers yeah. in that way. Like, do you like that? You know what, bro? I don't I don't hate on them. I used to not like them back then, but now that I see. That you know, you got these influencers, you got these other people. They're actually showing commitment. They're showing yeah. their passion for boxing. I think Jake. And is, at yeah. the end, yeah, just like Jake, and he's making, you know, he's he's fucking, he's doing some good stuff in boxing. And at the end of the day, this is what we're here for. You know, if somebody has passion in boxing, I can't hate on them. Yeah, I love boxing myself, and this is why I'm boxing to hopefully one day make people that don't know nothing about boxing fall in love with it. So mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with it if you can make money with it. I feel like now. It's not even people are mad because he's making that much money off the boxing, but it's not even the boxing. It's about that he has that reach, he yeah. has that crowd. Yeah. So I mean, if he could, that those are his people. Those are the ones that he's built. So if he can make money off that, then I hats off to him, and you know, just keep doing it. No, for sure. Is there any other names that you feel like, like you know, like you said, we we mentioned one seventy five. Is there anybody else at sixty eight you feel like, you know, I want to do that before I really move up outside of Canelo? Yeah. So we're we were trying to get that fight with Mungia. That oh, okay. didn't happen. Yeah, so yeah. now nah, probably just um probably just Canelo and David Morrell. Yeah, that's it. That's it. And what then, about Belenga? Edward Belenga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah, you're, he's a good fighter, but I, I feel like I, I want that fight for my bro uh my brother. Uh not my, my blood brother, but my my bro Diego Pacheco. Oh yeah. He yeah, trains I like with us. I like Pacheco. And that's a good fight. You know, Mexico versus Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico. Yeah. You know, Pacheco's a great, great fighter, him and his brother and uh I feel like you know what I, I did everything I could do at 168. Now it's time to you know pass it down to whoever it is at 168. Yeah. You know those guys are up there. I think you now I've been here for 10 years. You know I don't want to fucking keep the keep the, yeah. the weight class hostage either. Yeah, yeah. There's nobody beating me in there. <laughs> but how how important is like pound for pound rankings to you? Does that matter? Like do you like watch it and follow it and care? Yeah, I've been really uh, happy because lately my name has been, been coming up. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like the people, like I'm saying, like people like me that have been in the boxing game for a long, long time, I feel like that's really the only way that you could see your success throughout mm. your whole career. So now that I'm getting on there, though, that's those rankings of the past 10 years of my life. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I definitely do. Uh, I want to be number one one day. Yeah. So I'm definitely those. I, I definitely do care about those rankings. Where you put yourself right now, like in that in the in the rankings, where do you feel? Like Honestly, I'm gonna be 100 percent honest with you. I'm not I'm not the type of fighter that's gonna gas myself up too much. That I don't think that if if I don't think it it, it is. Yeah. I I believe I be, I think I'm number ten. Yeah. Ten nine. I agree with that. Not nowhere nowhere above that. It's not saying that I will not get there, yeah, but as a respect, yeah, yeah, as a respect, yeah, I feel like I've done pretty good the past three fights. They've been bigger names. I mean, I wish I could have get big, uh, would have got bigger names, but you know, I, I, I'm doing my job, and you know, what I mean, I feel like nine, ten, or nine is yeah. appropriate. Nah, for sure. Uh, who you think? I want to know just your opinion on you know the the thirty five to forty division is like it's hot over there. A lot of guys that you know they're saying could be the potential stars of the future. So you got like. Between Shakur, between Tank and Devin Haney, who do you feel like is the one that, you know, last man standing? To be honest with you, there's three guys, bro. There's Devin Haney, Gervonta Davis, and Shakur Stevens. Yeah. I don't know. I, I can't say. I, I feel like they're all good. They're all equally as good. But I would just want to see them fight each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the one thing that's killing the, the, the division. Hats off to Ryan Garcia though, oh, because yeah, yeah. Ryan yeah, Garcia Ryan he's making he's making these fights happen. Yeah, but I feel like uh, I don't know they're all good, bro. Even even too Ryan Garcia can make his way up too. I didn't I mean you don't completely take him off that list because maybe he could have a crazy run and come back and you know beat everybody. He got to beat Devin for yeah, me to be Devin, like if he, he beat Devin then he's in if the he like, beats Devin right. if he beats he Devin the- yeah, but if um, probably Devin or Tank. Yeah, it's just completely between Devin and Tank. Yeah, 
Yeah. You know, but don't fucking uh, don't rule out Isaac Cruz though. Oh, he's Isaac Cruz. Isaac Cruz has yeah, been yeah, doing. Yeah. He's been coming up, bro. I mean, he has. He doesn't really get the fights, but yeah, he's he's doing really good. So I mean, it, that that weight division is stacked. Yeah, it's stacked. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about Ryan, man? He been he been on social media talking about the Illuminati and all type of crazy shit. Yeah. Uh, it's been viral. Like when you see that, just you know, how how do you feel? Are you like, you know what? To be honest with you, that is, I can't really speak that language because. He's the way his his um his audience reach is crazy. Yeah. So I don't know what their team is doing. Yeah. At first I thought he was going crazy, but I think it's more calculated than anything. Mm. But um, I don't I don't really know how this shit works, bro. When you, when it gets up to that much fame, it just seems like they just they just want to keep their names in the headlines. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, but I feel like he has to lock in, bro, because Devin Haney is one of the best in the world. And uh, I think if he doesn't have a good training camp, I don't think anything else is going to be able to save him. Do you think he has a shot to win that though? Yeah, he's good. I mean, what he he beat uh, Devin Haney in the amateurs. I'm not yeah. saying that and that he's gonna beat him in the pros, but but yeah. he knows. You know, if anybody knows Devin Haney, it's Brian Garcia. Yeah, for sure. But uh, it's gonna be a great fight. But I think I think Devin Haney's gonna win for sure. Okay, let me get your prediction on uh, Tim Zhu versus Sebastian Fundora. Fun fight next week. Um, what you think about that? It's gonna be a, a hard fight, bro, because I sparred from Dora myself, and oh, he, yeah. he fucking made he like me your height, right? Yeah. yeah, no. Oh, he told you he's like six five. Oh shit, six six. Damn. <laughs> Damn, I ain't <laughs> and know Tim that. Tim Zoo like five eight. Yeah. But Tim Zoo, bro, uh, Tim Zoo is a beast. I love Tim Zoo because uh, I loved his dad. His yeah. dad is one of Costa, my favorite yeah, fighters. Yeah, so tough. I mean, me just being a loyal fan, and then him kind of fighting like his dad. You know, I do, I do like his fine style. But I, I know Fundora good, so um, hopefully it, uh, it's going to be a fun fight. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be yeah. a fun fight. I can't really say much. Nah, for sure. Uh, yo, David, man, listen, I appreciate your time, yeah. brother. We looking forward to everything that's coming up. Uh, you know, you got some big moments, some big fights really ahead of you. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing everything unfold, bro. Yes, sir. Thank you again, bro. My man, super appreciate dope it. episode of Cigar Talk, the Mexican monster, David Benavidez. We out of here.